In this Friday Functions video, we're going to go over a few of the most commonly used date functions available in Power Apps. I'm going to start by clicking on the drop-down on the FX to the left of the formula bar and selecting Date Time. This will give you a full list of all the date time functions available in Power Apps. I suggest you check out these groupings of functions because they're very helpful in knowing what's available by intent. So today we're going to talk about a few of these date time functions and I'm just going to start with the ones that are most commonly used which is now and today. Now if you click on any of these just one time you will get a summary of what it does below in this grouping and if you click on learn more it'll take you to our formula reference where you can review the now function. Um, but if you double click on it, it will actually put the function into the formula bar. So I'm going to just click here and remove this just to show you that if I go back to my date and time and I double click on now, it will put the now function in there, but it doesn't close the paren. And the reason it doesn't close the paren is so that you have time to read the syntax. This one is really straightforward. There's no parameters or anything and it returns now, which is the date and time now. This will update every time the app loads and or every time the fun formula is changed, but it won't update dynamically on the screen as you're watching it. So um, you would have to put some type of timer to refresh that field if you wanted it to be moving while people are working. Otherwise, this um, may not refresh directly on the screen. In addition to now, another popular function, which is very similar to now, is the today function. And those of you that have worked on SharePoint, you've used the today function before. It just returns today's date. So I'll double click on that, which puts it up there. No parameters needed. And now we've got the today's date. Understand that all of these date functions, though, are regionalized, which means that they will change their appearance based on what region I'm in. And I've got a way to prove that to you. I've got Edge open with the same app. And you can see that the date and the time here that this is when I opened it. If I refresh this, it'll actually have the same date and time as what we're looking at now. You'll notice that the date and the time, the month and the day of the year is switched. Um, and so because in uh, France, this is the French region, the the day of the year the day of the year comes first before the month and there is no such thing as am pm so that is removed so you can trust that your date functions will regionize for the consumers looking at the screen based on their regional settings okay now i can pull stuff out of here with a couple of these other functions that you may know of let's go back to date and time um such as month um year, weekday. You can pull those out of any of these just by kind of wrapping it around that function. So the month of today is July, so it's 7. The year of today is 2018. You can see that there. And one thing that might confuse you is weekday. So weekday doesn't actually mean um, and I'm going to change this to now because I want to pull some more out of this. Weekday doesn't actually mean like what we think of as weekdays, Monday through Friday. It means counting from the beginning of the week, what day are we on? Now, you know that we're on Friday because it's the Friday functions video. So you're probably wondering why it says six. It's because it's counting by default from Saturday. So if I wanted to start on Monday, I can just go ahead and type the start of the week as Monday. You see, that's a fun, a fun, uh, an optional parameter. And so now, if I click out of there, you'll see that I am on the day five because it's counting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So a little tricky there. Some people don't notice that or misunderstand it, and they think it means weekdays, like days of the week. Um, another really, really uh, cool function here are the calendar functions. So if you notice in here, um, let's go back to date time. You'll notice that I have calendar months long, calendar months short, weekdays long, and weekdays short. And these are really handy for drop downs. Like you just want to give someone a chance to pull a drop down with the months of the year. You don't have to go create a data source for that. 
you just put that function in and it puts the months in for you same thing let's let's run it so you can see I don't have this data anywhere it's just putting those months in for me so I can put that in a drop down a list box anything that takes multiple items um, and if I do week weekdays right it will give me Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday right Sunday so forth um, and what's nice about that is just it automatically populates that for me so going back to my French region where we were looking before notice that the months populated even in France with the appropriate accents and punctu and punctuation so they don't capitalize their months for instance and so you'll see that's all done for you. You don't have to think about using translation and stuff like that. You can just use these date functions and get some of those things filled in automatically for you, both for the months and the weekdays. Another one of my favorite is date diff. So if I wanted to calculate the age for Ryan and Audrey, by the way, uh, there is a business scenario behind this. We're pretending to be inspectors. And what we do is we take trucks, we drive trucks, and we go somewhere and we inspect things, right? Um, and so the company wants to keep date, track of our birthday because they want to know how old we are. There is a maximum age for drivers. And then they want to know when our license expires because they want to make sure that our license is active. Um, all the time right so I'm gonna just go and show you this data I'm gonna go into data sources and let's let's mess up Ryan right all of these dates are fictitious so don't think you can figure out our ages and stuff because you can't and it has nothing to do with our real licenses this is all fictitious but let's like let, let's make his license since expire in October okay and then I'm gonna go back to my app and I'm going to refresh that data source so that we can see that Ryan's license expires October of this year. And what I'm going to do is save. And let me just publish to make sure our data is connected properly. And let's, let's, let's go back. I'm going to zoom out a little bit go back I'm gonna reopen it just to make sure that the data refreshes properly uh, edit it I'm making sure to stay in Chrome so that we keep the English for the demo but I have edge open which is uh, set to a, a French region so that you can see what it looks like in uh, France but depending on what region you're in it would look differently like if if you were in China Jap or Japan you'd probably see that in that those characters so now I'm going to zoom in and you can see that his license expires on October 2018. All right. So we're going to actually do a couple things. We're going to use the date diff function to determine how old we are and how many days remain before our license expires. The date diff function is a really easy function to use. And all it needs, as you can see up here, is a start date and the end date. In this case, the start date is when I was born, right? And of course, this is fictitious, again. And then the end date is going to be today, right? So I can go ahead and use my today function. Now, the last thing I want to do in the parameter is say, what's the unit? I have the option to count years, quarters, months, days, hours, minutes, seconds, even milliseconds, which is really great when you're doing like a timesheet app and you need to calculate people who have um, submitted their hours for work. You can get into the seconds and the milliseconds and then round them up. But I'm going to go ahead and say I want uh, the years. And so this gives me uh, my fictitious birthday. Um, has I'm now 33 years old. Okay, now we're going to do this actually a little bit opposite for the license because here we want to see how many days are remaining. So I'm actually going to copy the formula to make sure that it's the same, right? And all I'm going to do is change the order because the start day in this case is today. And what I'd like to the end date to be is when his license, ex when our licenses expire. So I'm going to do this item license expiry date and then I want days as the difference okay so you can see here this is a very useful exp expression in this case because not only can I calculate the days 
but I can also go to like my color field and call out this stuff. So I can say if that number is less than 30, right? So it's less than 30 days before expiration. I want it to be red, otherwise I want it to be black. Um, to call out any late days. So let's go ahead and make this less than 100 because maybe we want to start sending notifications to people whose license is going to be expired in three months. Let's do 90. So if your license is going to expire within three months, we want to send you a notification, which means that I can even put this into an uh, if statement of my on change events and things like that in my app to send him a notification when he gets to less than 90 days. So lots of things can happen there. I love that the date diff function helps me. Now, let's suppose I want to calculate seniority. Now, seniority in itself is no different than age, except it's based on a different um, field, which is the start date field. And so I have one year seniority and Ryan has three. Um, but it's possible that we want to somehow uh, get the actual years and months, because right now I have years only. What I can do is I can change this to months, which will give me the month difference, and then I can divide that um, by 12. And then I can round that, so R-O-U-N-D, round that up just one. So I can decide what decimal place I need. So sometimes you'll want to do a little bit less than years, you know, you'll do months and you'll divide by the month so that you can get, okay, she's a year and a half. He's almost three years. And that's totally up to you. Um, but that's how easy it is. Now, what's, what if you want commas in your large numbers here, right? You can definitely do that. And it's funny that in the date time grouping, this is actually included there, the text function, which enables you to... Um, uh, format these numbers any way you'd like. Very similar to how you format custom numbers in Excel. I'm just going to do text and then I'm going to do my number format which in in quotes number comma and I can do you know whatever I want there and then close it. So I've actually formatted my number using the text function. Very very common. Now what if we want to add days to something or subtract days to something, okay? So let's say, mm, let's, let's insert a button on here. And I probably didn't, this is a bad scenario for this, but I will do it anyway just so I can show you how to use this function. Um, I'm going to actually, on select of this button, I'm going to email, no, I'm actually going to, well, I could email, I could use a flow, there could be all kinds of things here. But without adding the button, I think I can show you this without adding the button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a number or subtract a number from this number. So let me just copy and paste this from here. And this is what we call, what I'm setting up right here in this corner is a notification date. Like when they will get an email that says they're almost not going to have a job because they can't drive without a license, right? So this little notification right here is going to occur, I'm going to say 10 days before, before uh, the expiry, right? So what I can do here is in this text function here, I'm actually going to stop formatting it because I don't need to format it for this purpose. And what I want to do is I want to add days. So I'm going to do date, add, and I can add any number of things I want. Um, so let's just add to the license expiry date because we don't need all that stuff. So we're going to add to the license expiry date. I'm going to actually do a negative 30 which will subtract the days right? I'm going to subtract 30 in days. 
and this is the date I will send the notification to them that they're about to lose their job, right? If they don't get their license uh, fixed, they will be banned from riding trucks on this day, which is 30 days less than the license inspiry day. Okay, so of course you think that day to add is only for adding days, which of course if I remove the the negative sign, now I've added days to those license expiry days. But in this case, because I want my workflow to kick off 30 days earlier, I'm going to use a negative number to get the date they're going to get that notification. Really helpful stuff. So I use it a lot in workflows and automation to um, calculate dates to determine how soon before a date occurs should something else occur. And in this case here, I'm actually just finding out what their age is and what their seniority is as well. So you can see there's a lot of options when you're working with date and time functions. I hope you'll give it a try and uh, let me know if you're missing anything or if you'd like me to do another series on date time functions. I look forward to seeing you at the next Friday Functions video and have a great weekend.